Hi everyone, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. Here in New Hampshire today, can you see all this sun? I think it's 61 degrees here. That's amazing for early February. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous day. So I'm gonna quickly highlight a video that I'm gonna be doing for you guys later today. I'm gonna to be talking about glazing. I'm sure if you restore furniture and you're a small business owner or if you're just a hobbyist and you do it occasionally, you paint a piece of furniture, you've probably come across the phrase glazing. So I'm going to explain what it is, how you do it, and all the different types of glazing. There's a whole bunch of different looks. So I've got these sample boards that I already made up and they have these cute little ornate pieces glued to them. So it's gonna be a great visual demonstration of what does a clean glaze look like? What does a dirty, muddy glaze look like? What does clear wax look like? What does clear wax with dark wax applied over the top of it look like? So come along with me. We're gonna go in depth when it comes to glazing and you guys can figure out which look do you like best. Hey you guys, before we start glazing those sample boards behind me, we have to first paint them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint them in a white chalk paint color. Um, I make my own chalk paint just to keep my costs down for my customers and for myself. So I just, um, I use some Valspar paint, mix up my little concoction here, and I'm going to start painting. I'm going to put it on a time lapse. You don't want to watch me do this in real time. So let's get to painting. Okay, you guys, my sample boards are done. They are behind me. They're all dry. They've been painted with two coats of my homemade chalk paint. So chalk paint is very porous. So that means anything that you put on top of chalk paint is gonna just really drink it up really fast. So my intentions with my demonstration here is to show you the different types of glazing that are out there. So we're going to do our first set is going to be with General Finishes Pitch Black Glaze. I'm gonna do two variations of this glaze. One is gonna be more of a muddy glaze. The other one is gonna be a more clean glaze. My second set is going to be a brown glaze. It's by General Finishes. It's called Van Dyke Brown glaze effects. It's a water-based glaze. I'm also going to be doing a muddy look with that brown glaze and I'm also going to be doing a clean glaze. And then for my last demonstration on my sample board, it's a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to do one where I'm going to use the clear wax by Annie Sloan and then I'm going to do the clear wax and then I'm going to put dark black wax on top of that clear wax. So I'm gonna give you guys some variations of what a clean glaze looks like with waxing versus dirty or muddy. So let's get started um, with 
how to make those looks, how we can create them. Okay, you guys, first I need to prep my top two boards here with a barrier when I'm going to create my clean glazed look. If you just put the glaze, either the brown glaze or that black glaze on just a chalk painted piece of furniture, that chalk paint is just going to suck in that glaze and it's going to give you a very, very muddy look. So in order for me to show you what the clean glaze looks like, I need to add a barrier or a top coat first. So that's what I'm going to do on my top two sample boards is I'm going to um, apply a barrier of the polycrylic protective finish. It's a water based by Winmax. I'm going to do a clear matte finish on it. So I'm gonna take my chip brush here and I'm gonna apply it to my first sample board here. I'm gonna let this dry and then um, I will apply the, the dark glazing and you're gonna see the difference of how the glaze takes to the sample board when there is a top coat um, preventing it from being soaked in. So I'll go on to that next, but I just wanted to show you in order for me to do the clean glazed look, I first have to apply a protective barrier. So I'm gonna do that to my top two sample boards here. Okay, you guys, I just applied that matte finish poly acrylic on two sample boards. So they're drying right now. While they're drying, I'm gonna show you guys what the glazes look like when we just put them over chalk paint bare okay so in this sample board all that's on there is the white chalk paint nothing else and now i'm going to add the pitch black glaze by general finishes i do wear gloves when i glaze it can get messy um i would advise you to do so as well i do apply my glazes with um, chip brushes so i can get into all the nooks and crannies on a piece so i've already stirred these so I'm gonna get the glaze on, and you're gonna see how fast the color is gonna turn on this piece, okay? And I work in small sections. I have a clean rag, do you see it there? And then I'm just gonna wipe it off. So it's gonna change the color from white to like a light gray. You'll see it here. I'll hold up the sample boards when I'm done with it. Um, and when you're applying it just to the bare surface with no barrier, no polycrylic on it, you do have to work relatively fast. And again, I, I, I personally like using the chip brushes because I like getting really into all those nooks and crannies on an ornate piece. And then you want to quickly wipe it off. I know some people use wet wipes. That's okay too. Whatever method works for you. I like using a rag. And it's really changing the the board color here you'll see on this sample board and you just keep wiping and wiping away until you get the desired look that you want some people like a little more glaze some people like a little less again when you don't have a barrier like another top coat on top of it it's really going to change the color of the paint underneath. So just be aware of that. If you decide to put glaze over um, a lighter color paint, it is gonna darken it quite a bit. So this is what we call kind of like the muddy look, the dirty look when it comes to glazing. I'll ask clients when they wanna have um, some custom work done and they want glazing and I'm like, well, do you want the clean look or do you want the dirty look? Um, and sometimes they don't know what I'm talking about. So th these sample boards will come in handy as I can show them afterwards. A great illustration of what the muddy look, look, the muddy look looks like compared to the clean look. So there you go, there's this one. I'll bring it up here. 
so you guys can get a better view. Do you see how much that changed? The color of that board? It used to be really white. I mean, I'm gonna go in there and clean up the nooks and crannies on this piece, but you can see it really changed the color. So you have to keep that in mind when you're glazing over just chalk paint. So there's the pitch black. I like the pitch black. I used it um, one time. I painted um, some drawers, like it, it was called like a pickle pear green. I really like this color by Valspar. And then I took the pitch, pitch black glaze on the drawer and I wiped it off. I didn't put a top coat on top of the paint and I really liked the effect that the glaze gave that piece. It did darken it a bit, but I got a lot of great feedback on that. So the next um, sample board I'm gonna go on to is we're gonna do the muddy, dirty look with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And you can get an idea of what that looks like compared to the pitch black. Both of these, again, are that dirty, muddy look, okay? So I'm gonna switch my gloves out and we will start on that next sample board. Okay, you guys, the next sample board that I'm working on, I'm putting the Van Dyke Black, or I'm sorry, the Brown Glaze over just chalk paint and again I'm using my chip brush and I'm making sure I get it all in those nooks and crannies of that ornate piece that I glued onto these sample boards glazing gets messy people get your gloves on <laughs> and I'm gonna get that glaze I think these Sample boards are small enough where I can glaze the entire piece and wipe. Glazing gets a little more difficult um, when you're working on like a large surface, like the side of a dresser. That's when you want to work in smaller sections. But these boards are small enough. See, it's all full. Looks disgusting. It's like all brown and ooh. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe it away now. And again, chalk paint is very porous, so it's gonna soak up that glaze pretty fast. So you wanna work fast, wipe off as little or as much as you want. And you're gonna see the difference here between General Finish's two glaze colors. They have the brown and the black. The, brown, the black really changes the color of the, the piece. The brown here, it does change it slightly but not as much as the black. Again, these are both the muddy looks. And here's this one close up. This is the brown glaze. And then I'll also give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the muddy look in both the pitch black and the Van Dyke Brown. So you guys can get an idea of what those look like. Now you're gonna find with your glaze, it's gonna get into the nooks and crannies in some spots and kind of like pool up in those areas. I have a great technique. I will use a stiffer, smaller brush. I will wrap my rag around it like that. And that's when I'll go into those areas and I'll clean it up if it's pooling in some of those areas just a little too much. It's a great way to soak it up and to clean that up, okay? So those are the sample boards of what glazing looks like when you have more of a muddy, dirty look because we did not apply a top coat before we applied the glaze. So now we're gonna go on to the next demonstration where I'm gonna show you on those sample boards that are drying where I added a layer of matte finish polycrylic. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply the pitch black glaze and the Van Dyke brown glaze and you're going to see how much cleaner those glazing looks look like. Whoa baby look at the difference with these two. Now this is the pitch black glaze by General Finishes. This is what it does to white paint when you apply it without a barrier between the chalk paint and the glaze. Now, I like this look. It's very dramatic. It brings a lot of depth and character and actually a little bit of sexiness to your pieces of furniture. 
I really like this. Now some people, they want their pieces of furniture to stay more white with just the glazing going around this area and not affecting the color in this area. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys next is what the clean glaze looks like. Again, this is the pitch black in more of the dirty, muddy look. What a dramatic before and after. This is what the Van Dyke Brown Glaze by General Finishes looks like compared to the sample board above that has not had the glaze applied to it. So this, is, this gives you guys an idea of what that muddy look looks like. You can see it does change the color of your paint. Let's go on to the next one. What does the pitch black glaze look like? Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you what it looks like to apply clear wax to my sample board. So on this side, I'm gonna apply just the clear wax Annie Sloan, and on this side, I'm gonna apply the clear wax, I'm gonna buff it off, and then I'm gonna apply some dark wax. So you guys can see the difference between a clear wax and more of a dirty wax. So I'll take my Anne Sloan wax. I never, never dip my brush inside my container. Um, I'm only gonna need a little bit, so I'm gonna scrape it off on my lid here. I always use separate brushes for my clear wax and my dark wax, always, always. I'm gonna work it in my brush. If you guys haven't seen it yet, um, I'm gonna include a link within this video down below on how to apply clear wax and how to buff it off a large piece of furniture. I did a video a while back detailing how to do that. So I'm just gonna take my wax, I'm gonna work it into my sample board here and across that ornate piece. You can get a, a little aggressive when you wax. You really wanna work it in the wood. So I'm just gonna bring it over here. Now, a couple people, different people, they like to buff the wax off. There's different ways you can do that. You can either use um, a, clear ra a clean rag or you can use this little squishy guy. I like this guy, I got him at Lowe's. I usually use him on more of my flat surfaces so I'm just gonna use my clean rag. And I'm gonna buff off that wax here. And I like wax, it gives a nice satin sheen. It works well over chalk paint. It protects. And it just gives a little subtle sheen over white paint. You're not gonna see anything dramatic like you did with our glaze that I just did prior. Okay, so there's my clear wax. Again, you're not gonna see much of a difference. Just a little bit of a sheen to it, okay? So now I'm gonna apply my clear wax on this portion and then I'm gonna add the dark wax on top and you guys are gonna see how those work together. Again, I'm just gonna get that wax worked in. My daylight has gone, people. I'm losing bristles. Okay. Okay, now I'm buffing that um, clear wax off the other side of my sample board, and then I'm gonna add the dark wax on top. Now when you're laying your waxes like this, yes, you need to put clear wax on first, then you put the dark wax. It glides and removes easier when you have that barrier. Okay. So now I'm gonna add the Wise Owl. I love this stuff, I just ordered it. It's black wax made with hemp oil. And again, I don't use my same clear wax brush when I'm using my dark wax. I keep them separate at all times. So you can tell this is clean, doesn't look clean, I just keep it separate. Now with your dark wax, I'm really working it in my brush now. You're gonna get aggressive, it's gonna freak you out when you apply it, you're gonna think you're ruining your piece of furniture. I assure you, you are not. So you're gonna work it in. So you just wanna move it, get it in there, get it in the nooks and crannies.
Again, it's gonna freak you out a little bit. You're gonna think you've ruined it. You haven't. Okay, now I'm gonna take a rag, a dirty rag, not a clean one. Again, I keep them separate. Look at how that comes off, you guys. See, because we've added that barrier of the clear wax, it slides off easier and then it just stays in the highlighted areas that you want it to stay in. You might have to go back and add it. Like I can see some bare spots around my edges. I'll get to those. But there you can see the difference between, here's your clear. This is just bare, clear wax. And here it is with the dark wax on top. Just adds a little bit of more dimension, a little more character. I'm just gonna add just a little more of that dark wax around the edges where I missed it. And you can add as much as you want. You can keep adding until you get the look that you want. And if you get too much dark wax on, take your clear wax, put a little more on, and just you can wipe it off that way. I'll say this, usually with wax, it is forgiving. Unlike glaze, is a little tougher to, I guess, fix a mistake. I have better luck fixing um, a mistake with wax. All right, you guys, I will do some final photos comparing all of these looks, some close-ups, so you guys can see how they all look next to each other. And then you can, you can get an idea of what type of look you like best for your next furniture restoration project. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, you guys, we're off to the last look on my sample boards when it comes to glazing. So do you remember those boards that I put the matte finish poly acrylic on? Well, they're dry. So now I'm gonna show you what a glaze looks like when you apply it over a top coat like a poly acrylic. So we're gonna take that pitch black glaze from General Finishes Again, I apply mine with a two inch chip brush. That's what works best for me. I always wear gloves um, and I have my dirty rags nearby ready to wipe this glaze away. And again, putting on glaze like this, like, I mean, look at this. It's kind of scary <laughs> after you've painted a piece of furniture and it looks all beautiful and you decide to apply a glaze because this looks like you're ruining it you're not but it makes you feel like you are so i'm gonna get that pitch black glaze all on my board here again if i was working on a larger piece of furniture like at the side of a dresser i would be working in smaller sections and i would be dragging my rag all the way from the top all the way to the bottom i don't do circular motions when i'm wiping off my glaze especially on a large piece of furniture so now I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna wipe off that glaze. What I'm noticing already as compared to the other sample board that did not have any type of top, uh, top coat or barrier between the paint and the glaze, this is coming off much, much easier. And I'm noticing the color white is staying more true underneath. Whereas the other one, I felt like it changed it a lot faster. So I got most of it off with my rag. It's still a little too, too dark to my liking. So I'm going to take some wet wipes and I'm gonna wipe it even further off to get the look that I want. Again, you can go light, or as dark as you want with glaze. Usually when I'm doing a cleaner look, obviously I want more of the original paint color to stay true to what it is. 
it's going to change a little bit, but not as drastic as putting glaze directly over your chalk paint. So again, it all depends on what you want, it all depends what your client wants, what you want to go for. And I always have wet wipes, because I'm a mom. I have them in my truck, I have them in my workshop, I have them in the living room, I have them in the kitchen, I have them in the bathroom, I have them in my bedroom, I have them everywhere. Okay, I am liking the look of this. So this again, it's staying more white underneath. I'm trying to get off as much as I can, but also leaving some. I kind of like the look that's happening. After I'm done with this one, I'm going to go ahead and get my other sample board and apply the brown glaze, the Van Dyke glaze by General Finishes as well. We'll get a peek at that. Alright, so I'm going to give you guys a close-up of what this one looks like. Again, I'm still wiping it, but you can kind of see that it stays a little more on the board more than the clear wax and the dark wax. If you notice the clear and the dark wax, it stays just basically right there on that ornate piece. Where this, it brings it some more into the grain. If you compare this black, the pitch black, this is the pitch black on just the chalk paint. Look how dark that is. Then if you put a barrier, you get a cleaner look. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next one, which is the brown glaze. Okay guys, I'm on my last final sample board. Thank you for sticking with me. And before I apply the brown Van Dyke glaze by General Finishes, I wanna thank you all for, if you are returning um, subscriber to my channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I think I'm at 165 subscribers. I know that's not a lot, but I'm trying to put out quality content and stuff that I feel that people would find interesting or if they re, um, if you refinish furniture, if you've come across these issues like I have in the past, I would have loved to have um, like a go-to person or a mentor <laughs> in this line of work and I do watch a lot of YouTube videos um, to get tricks of the trade. So I hope I'm providing that type of information to someone else who's starting out or someone who's venturing into this as a hobby. I, it's a lot of fun for me. I love creating and it's quite interesting all the different finishes uh, that you can create. So thank you once again. Um, if you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. It's over there. Over, um, if you're looking at your screen and your screen is enlarged, either on your phone or your home computer, um, it's off to the lower right-hand corner. So thank you so much. So let's get started with the General Finishes Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And now we're going to put that over my sample board that has that barrier of that polycrylic. I noticed I always say polycrylic or polycrylic. I interchange them all the time. Just something I do. Okay, getting it on that board. I'm noticing again that it's not as porous. Looks like it'll be easy to wipe off. I got my brown rag. I keep my brown rag separate from my black rags. And I am wiping it off. It's coming off pretty easily. I'm gonna take a wet wipe. wipe 
really takes it off fast. So I'm noticing already it's not as dark as if I would put the glaze straight on top of my white paint. It doesn't change it as much. My white um, underneath stays more true to a white color. And that brown glaze just gets into the edging of that ornate decoration. And then you guys can compare definitely see the difference between the two. The top one is the muddy one where I did not put a top coat, a barrier, so you can see it soaked in more into the paint color. Whereas this one, you have more of a barrier and you notice it just went into the nooks and crannies of that decorative piece on the front. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any further questions, um, of the methods that I used or the products that I used, please leave your questions in the comment section. I make it a point to answer any comments or questions that people leave me. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys soon.